Okay, hello there Pixel Pushers, it's Sadiq Hussain here from the um, YouTube channel Pixel Pushers and we're going to um, try and push some pixels on this rather flat image. So this is taken downtown in the city centre on a cloudy day. Uh, hardly any detail in the sky, although we will extract a little bit. But in fact, we don't need the detail. What we really want to do is, is um, make sure that the foreground... Uh, the building and indeed the um, the street furniture here uh, stands out from the background and will really darken the background down so that it gives it a good contrast image. So this is a raw file, Canon raw file, and uh, so we're in the develop persona. As soon as I open it, it goes into the Canon, um, sorry, into the Affinity Photo develop persona. So first of all, let's just see what can we do to boost. So we're not worried about the background so much, it's just the foreground because we're going to select the foreground and we're going to mask it off. Uh, we're going to put it on its own layer, sorry, and uh, and then we can adjust the background accordingly. I really want a bit of contrast uh, and we're going to convert it to black and white anyway because there's hardly any colour in this image, so we don't need colour. Okay, you don't need to worry about white balance. Uh, let's just check shadows and highlights. So these are just under the basic um, adjustments tab. Okay, just bring up the shadows a little bit. Just bring up the highlights a little bit. Okay, I don't think we need to do anything more than that. So click develop. That takes us into the photo persona. As you know, in Affinity Photo, you've got your develop persona for a raw file. And then it takes you into the photo persona for further editing. Okay, so now what I want to do is to select the building and my preferred method is to use the selection brush tool uh, which tends to work uh, you know, pretty well in most instances. So I'm just going to select fairly widely and then zoom in, and reduce the size of the selection brush and then fine tune it. And we're going to refine it anyway. We've done videos on using the selection brush before so go back and check those i'll put a link into one of those in the description um, and if you hold the um, space bar it means you've got you can toggle between the um, the hand tool the view tool so it means that you can move uh, the image around depends on the size of your monitor obviously okay so we've got the building selected um, and we're going to select this it's not a flagpole, but it is a some street lighting, um, which gets in the way, actually, um, in this location. I don't like them, but they are what they are. So we're just going to add selection to that. And we'll do this little one as well uh, afterwards. So always be careful that when you're doing a selection, is reducing the size of your selection brush tends to give you a more accurate selection. The bigger selection uh, brush you have and uh, the further zoomed out you are, the less accurate it can be. And also it depends on how quickly you do the selection. Take your time. It does take a little time, obviously, uh, but the selection is key. And actually I think this has done it pretty well. It has done it pretty well. Okay, so we're happy with that. I'm just gonna do this other little what I think might be a flagpole. Let me uh, just go back to to that. Okay, that flagpole doesn't matter because that's in front of the building that's already been selected. So zoom right into that, right into it, and then reduce the size of your selection brush. Again, it really helps. And the reason why we're doing this selection of the foreground objects so that we can treat the background in a way that makes it a bit more interesting, makes it, um, gives it a really high contrast feel, but without it affecting the foreground. Okay, we're starting to see a bit of the detail in the clouds, but in fact, we don't want those anyway. So now that we've done a selection, click on refine, always use refine. Because even if you haven't got to refine any edges, which I don't need to here because it's done a good selection, uh, you have got the option to refine it, um, refine the, the mats, refine the foreground, reselect the background and so on, change the feathering. But it also allows us to um, select the output method and we want to output on a new layer. Okay, 
and put on a new layer give that a couple of seconds and as you can see there that uh, is on a new layer whereas the background has been disabled but if we put it back on then uh, because that's we're going to be um, uh, manipulating that so what what we want to do is actually put on a uh, adjustment layer so let's go to um, curves you can use levels you can use curves but let's just do because really what i want to do is darken um that um the background no do we want a little bit of detail in the clouds yeah we could do okay now we're going to convert it to black and white so this sort of color aberration that you see down here you won't see that anyway okay well, i'm happy with that so always take your adjustment layer and make it as a daughter layer with the layer that you're so it, it's nestled grouped with that layer so you don't have any problems with um any uh, uh mistakes uh in which layer you've got selected so now that we've done that uh, i actually want to put a uh, a gradient uh using the gradient tool I'm going to just use a radial gradient. It's really what I want to do is to make the sky have a little bit of interest and we can change the feathering of that. maybe about there okay uh, and in fact what i'm going to do is on the uh, gradient tool i'm going to add a new uh, node okay insert a new node and that node i'm going to make that um a shade of gray okay so let's just go to the grayscale And you know you can do it by eye. Okay, so let's say we're happy with that, and then go back to that. Okay. Again, you can adjust. So all of this is to the background only and now you can see the um, the foreground is on its own layer okay sitting on top um, so any adjustments we want to make because um, that boring sky now we just make giving it more punch and remember we're going to collapse all these layers and convert it into black and white anyway um, so what I want to do is to select that top layer um, collapse these layers now that served its purpose uh, that top layer which is the uh, foreground and what I want to do is to add another adjustment layer uh, we can put a live filter on if we wanted to but let's um, let's do curves again again see where that curves adjustment goes and what we want to do is we want to nestle it as a daughter layer with that foreground so it doesn't accidentally affect the background and then of course you, you can move it afterwards um, but but why do it then when you can do it beforehand okay so we're just going to add a bit of boost to this foreground just to add a bit more interest to it okay okay i'm happy with that okay so let's um convert all of that so let's just right click on it and uh, if we merge down then that merges everything into one into one um, layer and if we know um uh, that's not what it's supposed to do okay so let's just go back a step it's not what well, i wasn't expecting it to do that um so what we'll do is where we will put these two layers together we can group these two layers together and there's always one way more than one way of doing something and that group layer now i'm going to add a 
black and white um, adjustment layer. So that will affect everything. Uh, and again, because there wasn't a lot of color in it, uh, you probably won't be. Able, and I think that color here, it adds a little bit of contrast. So that's good just to have that um, pop a little bit more. But the rest of it probably yeah, boost the blues, which are being reflected in the building. Um, actually, that makes it a bit flat, so I'm going to darken that down. It, this is all very much a personal preference uh, about what uh, what makes the image look the way you want it. Okay, so that now um, is the finished article. So we've radically changed the background. Okay, if you wanted to, you could change that um, gradient tool uh, that we applied. You could change it into a elliptical tool. You could put a light coming in from the top if you wanted to. You can do all sorts of things. But for now, let's leave it at that. And then the final thing I want to do, again, I want to convert, I want to um, uh, merge down. Okay, so that layer is the uh, um, layer with everything on it. And what I want to do is put a little key line um, board around it. And to do that, if you remember, go to the effects in the um, layers panel and go to outline. Make sure you tick the box and select um, the lettering. Then you get the variables here. We don't want it to be black. We want it to be white. And we don't want it on the outside. We want it on the inside. and uh, we do want it white, sorry. Let's just change the radius. Now, I don't want a big border like that because I think that distracts from it. I just want a thin, thin line. And I think even that's a bit too harsh. Okay, let's have a look. Command and zero, or control and zero on a PC to give you full screen of your image okay sometimes it doesn't always look as if that key line is the same all the way around um, it, it usually is so always just zoom right in and have a look you can see it is it's just sometimes the, um, the the graphics card on your pc how it displays it, it, it it's not all doesn't always define it even though this is a reasonably high-end um, laptop but nevertheless uh, on a small screen it doesn't always so I'm happy with that key line if you wanted to adjust it of course you just double click the effects and you can up it a little bit if you wanted to let's just up it a little bit there and close it okay and then at the end of that you just obviously export it file and export and then JPEG or PNG or even a TIFF if you're going to be printing or um, a PDF, sorry, a um, PSD file, if you're going to be editing it in Photoshop or Lightroom. Um, uh, so you can do any of those, but I'm not going to save it just yet. What I want to really just summarize is that when you have a relatively boring, uninteresting sky, in this case it was grey, but of course it could be pure blue sky um, if it's if it's a little bit uniform then you can apply the same thing turn it into black and white isolate the foreground and then um, treat the background in a different way to add a little bit more drama a bit more interest certainly it's not natural it is a surreal picture but that as a black and white conversion if that's printed out and framed that'll have impact you could put that in the lobby of that particular hotel and uh, I'm sure people would take notice of that rather than the original image. Thanks for watching and uh, do subscribe if you haven't already done so. And uh, we have gone past the 500 subscribers. I said I would do something special, but I haven't been very well again. Um, and so uh, all being well, um, that's why I haven't done a, a video for a, for a few days. But all being well, we will do something. So please spread the word. Please uh, watch some of the other videos and any comments and feedback. That's the most important comments and feedback. And we've had quite a few recently and I'm going to take in those on board as we go through. But this was an image that was sort of in the wings that I wanted to do and develop and um, and make an impact with and so let's finish that and uh, we'll see you next time